hello and welcome everyone uh, to the webinar titled seamlessly provision apache druid in kubernetes using kubedb i am taputit chandrapal i am working uh, as a software engineer at, at appscode and currently working in our um, in the addition and management of uh, apache druid database in the kubedb so without further ado let's get started this is the table of contents of today's webinar. At first, we are going to look at uh, what is Druid, uh, how does it functions, and uh, what is uh, what is the, some of the common use cases of Druid. Then we are going to look at the Druid's architecture, uh, how it is designed, uh, and get a an basic basic idea how how Druid uh, Druid is designed. Then uh, we are going to see how KubeDB actually provisions uh, Apache Druid in Kubernetes. Uh, then we are going to look at the uh, feature and specification of kubedb uh, uh, kubedb man <coughs> managed apache druid after that we are going to uh, uh, have a live demo where i will show you how to deploy apache druid in uh, kubernetes using kubedb uh, uh, and uh, we will be doing it in uh, in the in the in, in the local kubernetes uh, ki uh, kind cluster after that, we are going to have a Q&A session where you can ask any <coughs> any of your query about the webinar uh, or, um, or or KubeDB in general. So what is Druid? Druid is basically a high-performance real-time analytics database that delivers sub-second queries on streaming and batch data uh, at scale and under load. Most often, Druid powers use cases where real-time ingestion fast query performance and high uptime are important. Then comes elastic architecture. Druid has an elastic architecture, which means the components of Druid are loosely coupled. It has components for ingestion, query, orchestration, combined with the deep storage, which enables easy and quick scale up and scale out. Then comes the real time or uh, batch ingestion. Druid can ingest data either in real time or batches. Ingested data is uh, immediately available for querying. Then comes the columnar storage format. Druid uses columnar, uh, column oriented storage. This means uh, it only loads the exact columns needed for a particular query. This greatly improves uh, speeds for queries. Then comes the SQL support. Uh, developer and analyst can easily use the similar familiar SQL API for end-to-end -end data operation across ingestion, querying, and transformation. Now we are going to look at the uh, architecture of Druid. So as you can see in the diagram, uh, Druid has a distributed architecture that is designed to be cloud-friendly and easy to operate. Uh, this design includes a enhanced fault tolerance uh, so, uh, which means an outage of uh, one component does not immediately affect uh, the other components. Like if the, let's say, uh, router is uh, un uh, unavailable for a moment, that does not actually affect uh, the availability or stability of uh, coordinate or overload or any other processes in Druid. As we can see from the diagram, uh, there are several services of, uh, several types of services of uh, Druid. These are coordinator, overload, router, broker, middle manager, and historical. Uh, these services are organized are usually organized in uh, three server types. One is master, another is query, and another is data. So uh, uh, other than these, uh, these built-in uh, service types, here Druid actually uh, has three external dependency, which are metadata storage, which is uh, then, uh, then, then a zookeeper and deep storage. So, uh, so, which means uh, you need to ensure uh, by yourself these dependencies are available and uh, Druid, and, uh, Druid is able to connect to these de uh, dependencies before you actually provision Druid. Good news is our uh, KubeDB has uh, support for uh, Zookeeper and um, uh, MySQL or PostgreSQL for metadata storage. So, let's, uh, let's get a basic idea about what master server does. So, a master server uh, basically manages data ingestion and availability. So it is responsible for uh, starting new ingestion jobs and coordinating availability of uh, data on the data on the data servers. So uh, so uh, and and the operation of master servers is basically divided into two 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 services. One is coordinator service and another is overload service. So uh, what coordinator service 
does is it watches over the historical processes. He watches over the historical processes on the data server. So they are basically responsible for assigning um, assigning segments uh, to specific uh, historical servers and, uh, and 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 make sure that all the segments are oil balanced in 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 different uh, historical processes. Uh, for your information, uh, uh, do it actually stores its data and indexes in uh, segment files, uh, so which is uh, partitioned by time, and uh, do it creates a segment for each segment time interval that contains data. So basically, segments are which are, are the um, are the data uh, that uh, do it stores. Uh, then comes the uh, overload service. So overload service watches over the uh, data service in the same way like coordinator and it watches over the middle manager service. So uh, it, what it does is basically it manages the data ingestion process uh, and, and, and it, is, it is responsible for assigning ingestion tasks to middle manager and for coordinating segment publishing. Then uh, we are going to look at what data server does. Uh, the, the operations of data server in the same way is divided into two services. One is middle manager and another, another is historical. So, uh, in, uh, so what historical server does is historical servers uh, ser services handle storage and, uh, and, um, and, uh, and, and querying on historical data. And uh, historical services download segments from deep storage. Uh, deep storage and uh, respond to queries about the segments. So, so when you when you query a uh, data from uh, from Druid, it is basically queried from historicals, and uh, those data are loaded from deep storage. Uh, then comes the middle manager service. So, middle manager service handles the ingestion tasks. Uh, so, ingestion ingestion of new data into the into the cluster. So, they are uh, responsible for reading from external uh, data sources. Like, if you want to insert data in Druid from uh, from an external data source, uh, then uh, uh, then and 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 publishing new new Druid segments. So, uh, after that uh, comes the query server. So, a query server provides the endpoints that user uh, users and client applications can interact with. So <clears throat> query servers uh, divides this operation uh, between uh, brokers and router, as we can see. So what 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 broker service does is broker service receives uh, queries from external exter exter uh, external clients and forwards those uh, queries uh, forwards uh, and forwards those queries to data servers. <coughs> Additionally, when uh, brokers receive results from the queries. Uh, queries it actually it actually merges those results and return them to the caller. So in in simple words, b b broker actually accepts your client queries and it 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 queries the historical data historical servers for the data and after getting uh, getting the data, it actually merges the merges the result for the for for returning the query. And uh, uh, what what router service does? What router service basically provides a unified uh, API gateway in front of broker coordinator. On the world. So, which means you can, uh, if you want to communicate to coordinator, overload, or broker, you can actually communicate through router. Uh, also, router provides an uh, uh, an an, an web a web console. Uh, so, in uh, using the web console, you can actually manage manage data sources, tasks, and uh, view server statuses and uh, segment information. So uh, and uh, it's like uh, this is all about the built-in type, built-in uh, services that uh, Druid offers. And other than other than that, it actually depends on the external dependency. So first of the external dependency is uh, uh, deep storage. Uh, so what deep storage does does is it actually uh, uh, stores stores any data that has been ingested into the system. And uh, deep storage is basically a fair shared file system uh, by uh, that is accessible by all the Druid processes. And uh, Druid you actually uses deep storage for uh, following two reasons. One is uh, to store all the data you ingest segments that uh, get loaded into the historicals uh, that uh, for for low latency queries also kept in deep storage for uh, backup purposes. And as a way to transfer data between the services, you uh, deep uh, the data are stored in the <coughs> deep storage. Then comes the metadata storage. So Apache, Apache Druid relies on the uh, external dependency for metadata storage. Druid uses the metadata store to house various metadata about the system, but not the actual data. So basically, the metadata of Druid in uh, stored in uh, metadata storage in a cluster deployment. Uh, this is typically typically a traditional uh, RDMS like uh, Postgres or MySQL. 
So, uh, my, so you can actually uh, use use uh, kubedb managed MySQL or use kubedb managed uh, Postgres for for the metadata storage uh, for Druid. Uh, then comes the Zookeeper. So Apache Druid uh, uses Apache Zookeeper for internal service discovery, coordination, and leader election. So um, you can also use our uh, uh, kubedb managed zookeeper which is actually added in the latest uh, release in our latest release with druid uh, through to uh, to 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 deploy and the zookeeper if for uh, for a druid cluster now we are going to <clears throat> look at uh, how uh, how kubedb uh, operator does the magic or uh, deploys uh, sim the druid in uh, in a kubernetes cluster so for deploying a or provisioning a, a druid cluster in a kubernetes or um, you have a kubernetes cluster the user have to create an druid custom resource so the kubedb operator the provisioner operator kubedb provisioner operator it actually watches uh, watches the druid custom resource uh, so when a custom resource is created uh, it uh, it uh, it actually uh, sees the um, custom resource and uh, the yamls of the custom resource get the custom uh, custom resource and uh, it actually create uh, the uh, the druid uh, uh, druid according to the definition in the yaml so uh, usually a druid cluster usually a consists of a comprised of a stateful sets uh, like uh, like in the architecture we have seen, uh, Druid has multiple uh, types of nodes. So for every node, there is a one stateful set. Then services, uh, there are multiple types of services, primary services, governing services, and uh, um, we have provided uh, uh, service for coordinator, overload, and uh, router, and broker. So all of these services, this is also deployed by the operator. Then uh, create secrets like authentication secret. Uh, then creates an app binding which actually uh, actually uh, contains the information about the uh, about the about the read cluster uh, and and obviously the PVCs which is basically uh, if you if you choose to deploy read in uh, in a durable mode then uh, you will be need you will you will be in need of uh, of uh, of persistent storage for uh, data servers like we have seen in the in the architecture for middle uh, for <clears throat> middle manager and historical uh, pvcs will be deployed now druid offers kubedb uh, uh, offers uh, multiple termination policies uh, actually there are, there are four of them uh, one is uh, uh, first one is uh, halt so when you uh, uh, delete uh, the Cluster Druid cluster you have already created. Uh, if the uh, if you choose to um, to select the termination policy as halt, then uh, then the operator won't delete the secrets and PVCs. So as a result, you can recreate the cluster uh, from those secrets and uh, PVCs. Also, you can choose do not terminate, which is basically for uh, for for preventing any any unexpected deletion of the uh, database. So if you choose do not terminate, the database uh, the deletion of the database will be rejected. And then comes the wipeout. So wipeout is basically like as the name suggests, it actually uh, wipes out the database, or there will no there will be no trace of the database in the cluster uh, if you select the termination policy uh, as wipeout. And uh, the default, like if you don't mention any termination policy the default termination policy will be delayed so which basically keeps the secrets in the cluster as a result uh, you can actually recreate the read cluster from those secrets so that's all about how how get an basic idea or um, get an overview of how how the kubedb does the magic of provisioning different databases or druid so let's let's go to the next slide so these are the feature and specification <coughs> of uh, of of, of kubedb managed uh, apache druid so the first one is external external dependency management so as we have seen in the architecture that uh, druid actually depends on external dependency heavily so uh, you have to deploy in a matter a postgresql or mysql as metadata storage uh, then then a zookeeper and and you have to ensure a deep storage as well so uh, the good news is uh, our kubedb also offers uh, uh, mysql or postgresql and and also zookeeper uh, which can be easily deployed uh, deployed uh, using uh, using kubedb and after deploying those after provisioning those metadata storage and uh, and uh, zookeeper you just have to mention the name of the uh, name of the name of the uh, zookeeper instance or 
metadata storage in instance and uh, the druid operator will uh, or qdb operator will uh, will 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 uh, will do all the necessary configuration necessary to connect to that uh, to that external dependency so which actually simplifies the provisioning of apache druid uh, a lot then comes the management ui uh, which is basically uh, router so uh, as we have mentioned in the architecture that uh, druid actually offers an uh, management ui uh, uh, through router uh, so you can actually uh, use like when when you deploy a, a druid cluster with router there will be a uh, there will be a service through uh, router service through which you can actually connect to the uh, management ui and uh, and manage the druid cluster from there like you can ingest ingest data or uh, keep uh, uh, ingest data or or, or see your server status and uh, query your data. Then comes the customizable health checker. So what what health checker does is it continuously checks the overall health and stability of the database uh, after a certain period, and it checks whether the database is in ready state. Uh, then pings the database. Then it also checks the read write access by reading and writing re dummy data. So, uh, which actually ensures the database is stable, ready, and uh, and and in accepting uh, accepting your queries or uh, API or, or uh, accepting your queries. So, basically, this this health checker is, is is pretty much customizable, and you can actually uh, actually set the set the period second according to your preference. Like after how many seconds the uh, the um, the QDB operator will check the health of the database, uh, and also you can set the uh, set the set the timeout seconds and failure threshold. Also, you if you want don't want to uh, check the health of the database, then you can uh, you can disable the health checker as well. Then comes the custom configurable. So, which basically means is uh, if you want to uh, if you want to uh, make your Druid cluster uh, um, or, or provision your Druid cluster some uh, some uh, some some of your your configuration which you 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 want to provide, you can actually do that through custom configuration or custom config secret. You just have to mention the name of the custom config secret in the Druid YAML, and the Druid DB operator will start the Druid cluster with those configuration. Then comes the obviously persistent volume. So if you try, if you want to deploy Druid with uh, with persistent volumes or a durable uh, uh, type, then uh, then uh, the uh, the QDB operator will uh, will deploy two PVCs. One is for middle manager, and another is for uh, another is for historical, which is which means the data servers. So uh, you can, uh, if you want, you can do that. And uh, there will be multiple multiple termination policies like uh, like we have mentioned earlier that uh, there will there are four termination policies available for you and you can select uh, one of the termination policies that you prefer. Then comes the default security context. So all the containers of different nodes in Druid uh, are runs as non root and in restricted port security standard. Which offers the advantage of uh, enhanced security by minim minimizing the attack surface, reducing the risk of uh, privilege escalation, and improving overall system stability. So, if you want to install kubedb, you can actually um, uh, run this command, run this one command, and kubedb will be installed uh, in your Kubernetes cluster. And here, license is the is the path uh, to your license, which can which you can get from our um, from our uh, uh, from our website. This is a sample YAML of uh, Druid. Uh, so, I have split it in two parts. So, uh, as like in in any other Kubernetes YAML, uh, there is API version which is kubedb.com slash v1 alpha 2 and uh, the kind is obviously Druid and uh, then comes the name and namespace which you can uh, you can um, give uh, any anything uh, as your preferences. I have in, in this case, I have uh, given it as a Druid sample and Druid. Then you have to mention the version of the Druid you want to deploy. In this case, I have I have uh, deployed the uh, Druid version, latest version, 28.0.1. Then come the storage type. Storage type is, uh, in this case, I have given it as ephemeral. Uh, then uh, if, if, if you want, you can choose it as durable. Then in that case, the PBC for data service will be deployed. Then comes the config secret. So uh, if you want to deploy Druid with a custom configuration, you can mention the name of the custom config. You have to create a custom config secret and uh, mention the name in, in here or in the ML. 
then comes the deep storage you have to tell us the tell the yam uh, you have to mention the name of the type of the uh, deep storage uh, s3 azure or google and uh, and you have to provide a deep storage config uh, a config secret through which uh, using which the uh, the druid will will get configured or connected to the uh, deep storage then comes the metadata storage metadata storage uh, for metadata storage in this case i have using uh, i am using kubedb managed uh, mysql cluster so i have mentioned the name of the mysql cluster and the namespace of druid in this, in your case if you want if you deploy it as as kubedb managed mysql then you can you can just uh, just mention the name and the namespace of the of the My, uh, mysql cluster then uh, the druid will connect to it <clears throat> in the same way you can uh, i have uh, you if you choose to deploy deploy a Zookeeper cluster using kubedb then you can name the mention the name and namespace and uh, druid operator will do the rest and after that you have to mention the topology of the uh, druid cluster in the in the in this case i have kept everything as replicas to one so i have one replica for all the services if you want you can scale this up and uh, mention any any number of replicas of your preference and for historical and middle manager you have to tell the storage type in this case uh, in this case i have kept the access mode to re read, uh, read write once and the resources to request to 1 gv and uh, storage class to standard so you have to mention the storage type here <clears throat> let's uh, jump into the live demo where i will show you how to how to deploy uh, uh, druid in uh, kubernetes cluster Uh, here you can see I have uh, already deployed a MySQL cluster and a Zookeeper cluster. Uh, so uh, and and a, and a S3 bucket I have created a S3 bucket in kind cluster. Uh, so but these are for the external external dependencies and. Uh, uh, with the, with this uh, with this uh, MySQL cluster and Zookeeper cluster, some secrets are deployed, and um, and and some services are deployed. So uh, I am what I am going what I have done is. Uh, I have uh, I have connected the I uh, I have I have mentioned the uh, name of these MySQL clusters MySQL cluster and uh, Zookeeper cluster in the YAML. If I show you the YAML of the Druid, uh, I think my uh, Druid YAML is uh, visible. Uh, the MySQL is deployed using this YAML, which is basically which, which you can find in our uh, in our website kubedb.com. So in this case, uh, if I apply the, I have applied this UML and the MySQL cluster is created in the uh, Druid namespace, and I have deployed the Zookeeper uh, using this UML, uh, which is which is you can find in the in the uh, in our in our website. So uh, after creating these two and 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 deploying a deep storage config, if I show you the deep storage config. So this is the deep storage config. So this is uh, basically, uh, let me just view it. So uh, I have deployed a deep storage config and like this one's, this one's uh, configuration secret, which I have to provide to the Druid. And uh, here I have mentioned the name of the bucket and, uh, and the access key and the region and the uh, base URL. So in the same way, <clears throat> you have to provide a deep storage config of your uh, S3 bucket or any 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 deep storage type you choose. So after applying after applying all these three deep storage config, um, a Zookeeper a Zookeeper cluster and a MySQL cluster, you can go ahead and uh, create the Druid uh, Druid uh, a, a Druid cluster. In this case, uh, as I have shown the YAML already in the um, in the previous slide, uh, I am going to deploy this Druid YAML uh, from the in our Kubernetes cluster. As you can see, uh, a Druid sample, a Druid named Druid sample is getting created. In this case, uh, all the pods, uh, as you can see, all the pods has uh, started coming. <coughs> And I and I have given all the repli uh, all the replicas of all the nodes to one. So a coordinator, a historical, a middle manager, a overload, and a router. 
and broker is created and here you can see the uh, see the uh, you, you can see the uh, services that it it, it has it, it has created a, a service for the, the broker state full set and a service for coordinator and and, uh, and one for overlords these are all cluster ip type uh, cluster ip type uh, services and and another one uh, another one is and another one is for um, uh, is is headless which is basically a governing service and uh, and another one is for routers and it has also created a, a admin cred for a druid uh, using which you are going you are you are you are you will be able to get connected to the druid cluster uh, and uh, that's that's all that it had created then uh, well, we are going to uh, port forward and see the uh, like you can see the druid cluster is in provisioning state so uh, it is actually the druid kubedb uh, operator is checking the health of the druid cluster by uh, trying to reading and writing in the in the cluster and uh, and checking the overall stability of the of the druid cluster once it has uh, ensured that the cluster is in a good state then it it will go to the uh, ready state in the meantime let us uh, let us uh, see the web console which is basically routers uh, through through the um, uh, through our uh, router service so this one is the router service let us put forward this service as you can see the druid cluster is 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 now in ready state so which means uh, the druid cluster cluster is in stable state and is accepting connection so what we are going to do is we are going to we are going to uh, accept access that uh, access that uh, uh, druid uh, uh, access that druid uh, uh, instance as you can see it is uh, it is uh, asking for the username and password which we can get from the admin cred that it has it has created so let's uh, let's uh, let's get the admin cred Here you can see the username is admin, which is by default is as admin and and the password. So let us copy the password. So let's set the username to admin and the password to password, and then sign in. Here we ca you can see the services that are available. Uh, here we can see there is uh, there is four service uh, six services available one overlord one coordinator one router and one broker and one historical one middle manager in the data source we can see the kubedb kubedb data source which is basically for uh, for health check purposes if you don't disable the health check then th this these data source will not be available let's go ahead and uh, uh, insert some data in the druid cluster so for that let's go ahead and select the load data uh, option and let's continue from the previous pick and as druid starts with some uh, example data we are going to load one of those so let's just select that and uh, parse data and i'm going to keep everything as it is because of the demo purpose uh, you can uh, update it as, as, as with your own preference let's just go ahead and submit the task so it will take a few seconds for the uh, few 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 moment to for the for the data source become uh, available so let's just wait for a minute So as you can see, the data source has been submitted, and uh, let's go ahead and query it. So this is our example, uh, our kubedb data source, which is basically dummy data inserted by uh, kubedb, and uh, now our and, and this is the uh, this is the data that we have ingested. Let's just select everything from this data source. As you can see, the data is queryable. Uh, like this, uh, you have you can also uh, deploy uh, kubedb managed Apache Druid and uh, use it. So, what are the few upcoming features? So, we are going to uh, we are going to uh, going to uh, add the features of monitoring using Prometheus and Grafana, and we are going to uh, uh, add the backup restore in our future releases, and we are going to have a TLS uh, add TLS in our upcoming features. And uh, now, 
if if you have any more queries about uh, the whole session you can ask me uh, ask me here i think there is no question so uh, thanks for thanks for joining